accidents happen. <laughs> oh my god! You probably know that heart-stopping moment when your phone breaks, your photos, messages, contacts. Um, <laughs> when was the last time I saved the backup? Basically, our whole life is on these things, which makes it so annoying when they break. But it happens all the time. What's interesting about a smartphone is pretty much everything in it breaks. We're going to literally look behind the surface. Are these things built to break so we keep buying new ones? Okay, I think I f it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to find out what happens to all these broken phones. Well, they create massive environmental problems. But let's start at the beginning. This is my old phone. It died a couple of years ago because the battery couldn't hold a charge anymore. But today, despite all the clumsiness in the world united in this body, I'll try and fix it. This is a repair kit I ordered online for 25 euros. Uh, that's the battery that we're trying to get into the phone. It comes with all the tools you need. A pair of tweezers, a suction cup, tiny little screwdrivers, the manual. Let's see, it can't be this hard, can it? Well, we'll see about that. For now, let's take a look at just how crazy we are about smartphones. We buy around 1.5 billion of them every year. Manufacturers really must be cheering. A lot of people actually believe they're inflating this demand through a thing called planned obsolescence. It was invented to stimulate the economy during the Great Depression in the US. The basic idea is that the quicker a product breaks, the sooner people will replace it with a new one. And some companies really did start to shorten the lifespan of their products. The filaments and light bulbs, for example, were made thinner so that they would burn out after just 1,000 hours instead of double that. And nylon stockings were designed on purpose to tear more easily, even though it's actually a pretty strong material. Things that you only use one time and then throw away, that's a, that's a perfect product for a manufacturer. It's because um, their economic model then repeats and repeats and repeats. So is the same true for smartphones? Are they designed to break? The idea with planned obsolescence is that there is intent. There is a smoke-filled room with evil people that are saying, wahaha, we're going to make these things die in 18 months. Uh, I'm not sure it works that way. Well, instead, what, the way that this works is that the marketing people are saying to the product designers, uh, don't put any effort into making this thing last longer than the lifespan of the original battery. Let's take a look at Apple. They were sued because people noticed their phones got a lot slower after they installed a software update. And guess what? In 2017, Apple admitted this was true and later agreed to pay a settlement. But they said they throttled the phones to extend their lifespan, not to get people to replace them. Is this really true? Uh, maybe. The thing is, companies might be doing this, but it's extremely hard to actually prove it. Well, I wanted to talk to them about this. I reached out to the three biggest smartphone producers, but none of them replied. But even if we can't be sure about planned obsolescence, they've got other ways to sell more phones. The biggest advancement in the history of iPhone. The most advanced iPhones ever. The most advanced iPhone we've ever created. Every release of a new phone model is basically saying, the one you bought last year is now old, get a new one. So you, um, you maintain your position in consumer society by what you own and what you wear, how you present yourself. Uh, you present yourself through possessions. It adapts to all paces of life. This is psychological obsolescence. Convincing people they need a new phone, even though they have one that works perfectly fine. And even if you don't care about the latest fashion and would love to keep your old phone forever, let me tell you, they are quite hard to repair. That works. This is the step that I've been warned of. When you open the case, there's a cable that's in there. You'll want to kind of hold it with your hand so that you don't pop it completely open. You want to just crack it open a little bit. Okay. Okay, I think I f it. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you bought a car and the tires that came with it uh, could not be replaced. So when the tires wore out, you had to get rid of the car and get a new car. We would not put up with this. This would be crazy. Uh, and yet that's the situation that we have with smartphones. 
turns out the cable that I broke is not that important, but this is really hard. There are tiny screws that you need special screwdrivers for, and the biggest challenge yeah, I think this is glued. It's removing the old battery, which is glued into the case. Making things hard or impossible to repair, that's another strategy to get people to replace them more often. I think I got it. It's coming off. Success! All that's left to do now is piece the whole thing back together. By the way, you're going to void your warranty the moment you open up your phone, so before you attempt to repair anything, be absolutely sure you know what you're doing. Not like me. It's not really closing up here, which makes me think I reassembled something wrong and don't want to break it now. Yeah, this is not going in. Well, up to this point, it went pretty well, but I just can't get this thing to shut. Like, how hard do they want to make it? I think I'm defeated. Yep, that thing is not powering on anymore. I tried for hours and couldn't replace something as simple as a battery. Most likely what is happening is that you uh, have a loose cable. That's my <laughs> remote internet tech support. I think you can still get this thing running. Uh, if, if, you're, uh, if not, uh, don't feel bad about taking it into a repair shop and asking them to finish it for you. Or I could just throw it out. I mean, that's what a lot of us do and not just with our phones. We have seen a rather increase of the e-waste mountain, so that globally speaking, we are generating now nearly 54 million tons of e-waste each year. Only less than 20% of this is properly recycled. The rest poses a real danger to the environment and the people who process it. Or it never leaves our homes. A lot of our material is still sleeping in our drawers, in our cellars. They are full of valuable resources and very limited resources as well. All this material is then finally not available for the production. We have an ethic, an aesthetic uh, of throwing things away. And so it's going to be very difficult uh, to, uh, to change this. Manufacturers are pointing at consumers, consumers are pointing at manufacturers. I think at the end of the day, everyone needs to take responsibility. We're in a completely unsustainable electronics industry and it's all of our faults and, and we can do better. And, and, and we, we can, we should, and we must uh, do better. What do you think? Should companies be forced to make their products easier to repair? Or is it also on us to choose more carefully which products we actually buy? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe for more videos like this every Friday.